Hi everyone, this is Terry, and this is Lesson 2, Covering Basics in PE Design 11. Make sure you watch Lesson 1. One of the things you'll find is I have over 85 videos that were recorded using PE Design 11. You'll see that I cover all of the topics within the software. When I say all, I'm talking about PE Design, Layout, and, and Editing. I have recorded some videos that include those different modules that you'll find here in within the options. But it, to help you get started, I want you to feel comfortable moving around on the screen. So that's what we're about to do. One of the things I want to mention to you is this area that you see on the screen. This is called your design page. And your design page is comprised of two portions. One is your hoop. So this is the representation of the hoop, the white box that you see. And then the design page area that's outside of the hoop is the gray area. Now if you go up to your flower and go down to design settings, you'll see this is where you can change the hoop size. So you want to make sure you select a hoop size that fits your machine. If you own a machine that the largest hoop it can use is a 5x7, don't select a design in a 9.5 by 9.5 hoop because you will have problems and your machine won't be able to open it. So make sure that you know the hoop sizes that fit your machine. And by the way, there are two types of machine. The what I call single needle machines, and then what I call multi needle. Now, there are some multi needle machines or machines that look like the multi needle machine that have a single needle. But if you're going to use that machine, you would want to use the multi needle machine. You'll notice that you have different hoops, and just as I mentioned a moment ago, select a hoop size that fits your machine. If you don't have a certain type of frame, such as a cylinder frame, don't select it. And we'll go back to the single needle machine. And one of the things that I want to show you is right now rotate is blanked out or grayed out. The reason it is is you can't rotate a square hoop. But if you select a 5x7, you can rotate this 90 degrees to put it in the landscape mode. We'll change it back. You can also create your own hoops if you want. That's what edit user hoop is. This is where you can add a hoop. So if you own a different brand of machine and you have a hoop size you don't see here, this is where you add or create your own hoop. I'll choose cancel. Custom size are for hoops that you create where you want to have what I call multi-hooping. And this is where you have a design that you've created that won't fit in, for instance, the 5x7 hoop size that I have shown on the screen. So I created a custom size, and it's going to fill up multiple hoops that are overlapped so that I can join the design. We'll be talking about that in a future video. The other thing that I want to mention to you is that you have under the hoop size two types of hoops that are called multi-position. Multi-position hoops expand the embroidery area for some of the machines that can only use the smaller hoop sizes. So what you do is you move your hoop into multiple positions. So like the 5x12 hoop, you can see how long it is. It's much longer than, say, the 5x7 hoop. Whenever you select a multi-position hoop, one of the things that you'll notice if you go to output is you can optimize the number of times to change the hoop's position. This tells the software how to make those decisions. We'll uncheck it, and we'll move back to the design page. And I'll go back, and I'll choose the 4x4 hoop size. Now, if I want to change the background color of my hoop, I can, or the inside of my hoop, I can do that right here. I can also change the background 
color of the design page. And you may decide that you want to change the interior color because you're trying to audition something such as a design on a t-shirt. To return back to your default values, just choose default. Now let's go to output. There are two different types of output that I want to talk to you about, and this is uh, referring to the sewing area. If you select the design page area, your patterns will be sewn so that the needle position when you start sewing is aligned with the center of your design page. The dimension of the pattern matches the size of the design page, therefore reducing your ability to move it around on the layout screen in your embroidery edit. That's one of the reasons why I choose use existing design area. With this selection, your patterns are going to be sewn so that the needle position when you start sewing is aligned with the center of your design and the actual pattern size is maintained. Therefore, you have greater mobility within the layout functions on your machine. We talked about optimized hoop change. Jump stitch trimming refers to the length of jump stitch trims for multi-needle machines. I'll go ahead and choose OK. And one of the things you'll notice, it appears that my design is larger. What's happened is, because I have a 4x4 four four hoop size, it expanded within my design page area to give me the maximum viewing field. Now, this helps me see if I have a design outside of my design page area. So if I need to change that, which if you notice this frame right here, I would need to, I can select that and I can resize it. Now I can scroll up and down using the arrow keys to move to the top or bottom. And one of the things I can do is I can hold down the control key and resize it so that it will fit in the hoop. You'll notice that right now this is not centered in the center of my page. To get back to the center, I can choose to have the selected object zoom or the one-to-one -one actual size zoom. So here's the one-to-one -one selected size zoom. If you choose the selected object zoom, what will happen is that it expands it to the size of the selected object. You'll notice that I also have a portion of this design that is underneath that frame. If I want to delete it, the easiest way for me to select it is to select those pieces of the design. Now I can just take my mouse and hold down the left mouse and click over on a corner of it and it selected all of the design. So that's not the best way to select it. What I can do is hold down my left mouse button and scroll up to the, the very top of that mailbox and now choose the arrow here to select that design and I can press the delete key and remove it. So now I have two designs on the screen. Let's go over to back to the home key and let's talk about a couple of things. If I want to save this design, what happens is the first time I go to save it, it will allow me to enter a name. So if I type lesson two basics and I want to choose a format, I can choose from all of the PES file formats from one to 11. Now what's nice about this is perhaps I'm, I'm using a machine that needs an earlier format. This is how you can accomplish that. The other thing you can do, and let me choose cancel, and I'll cancel again. You can go to file save as. I tend to use file save as the most, and the reason I do is I buy designs from third-party digitizers. I don't want to overwrite those designs. 
So what I will do is type lesson two basic and using the arrow keys, I can again select the version of the software that I want to save it in and I'll choose save. Now, if I happen to clear everything off my screen or close my software, I can open that design again. If I go to File New, one of the things that I can do is look at the most recently used file. And you'll see that right here under the basics. If we go to the wizard, you'll also see your most recently used files here and you can actually select it and open it. That's one of the things I like about the wizard because you have a visual view of that, that particular design. Let's go back and look at print. When you go to print and you have a design on the screen, you can choose file print, but let's go to print setup. In print setup, you have several options. You can select your printer. You can tell it whether you want it to be the actual size or reduced size. If you're going to use this and you really want to know what it's going to look like, for instance, on a t-shirt, select actual size. If you are trying to send something to somebody to give them an idea of what a design looks like, that might be a time that you want to use reduced size. You can look at this in a normal view or realistic. I'll show you both. Now, one of the things you can do is you can print your sewing area box and also your center axis, or you can print the snowman. You can also put a template on it to have the template grid, and you can select to add color changes. For right now, what we'll do is look at it with the snowman, and we'll select print preview. Now, you'll notice you have a visual reference of your grid, meaning not the grid, but your crosshairs. And here's the snowman. And by the way, I take my scissors, trim around the outer square, place it on my t-shirt, and then scan this in. And I'm with my machine that has the capability of reading the snowman. And it works just like the sticker. What I typically do is I apply a little bit of basting spray to, you, to the back of my paper. You can also use double-sided tape. You don't want to, to use too much spray or it becomes difficult to get it off or, and it can also gum up your fabric. And over here you can see that I have my colors selection. If I want to zoom in, I can zoom in or zoom out on this. You can also use your two buttons right here. You can change and go back between the pages by choosing the previous page and we'll zoom out so we can see the full page. Now we'll choose close. You can go directly to print, but we want to go back and go back and select another option. I think you know what the crosshair will look like. This time, let's deselect that and let's choose a grid and color changes and print preview. Now you see what looks like the plastic template that will fit over your hoops if you have them for your machine. So sometimes you might want to print the grid so you can see where the individual lines are across this grid and particularly if you have a design that's smaller in a hoop. I'll choose close and then if we go back into it you can also look at this and what is called a realistic view. In this case, you can change your attributes. I'll leave them where they are right now. And let's just turn off the template and let's do print preview. In this case, you have more or less a realistic view of what your design is going to look like. I'll choose close. You can also go and choose to print directly to your printer. I'll choose cancel. And now what we'll do is we'll go down and look at design property. With design property, this gives you the name of the design, the
the file version, meaning the PES file version, the last date you modified it, the size of the, the overall design, your stitch count, how much time it, it will take to stitch it out. Now this is an estimate and your number of uh, changes. You can also go in and name your design here. And this name can be something different than the, the file name. Maybe you want to call this the purple frame with the swirl. So let me just type that. And you can also add a category, and this will help you in uh, locating your designs, but also it will help you in categorizing designs later on, and I'll show you how to use that. I'm the author, so I'll put my name. Keywords will work like tags. So what I'm going to call this is uh, I'll use training and place a comma between it, basics, and I use some uh, imported shapes. I could put that. And you can add a comment if you want. Let's say that one of the things that you're doing is you're creating something for a customer. So you may want to put your customer name here, like customer XYZ. And we'll choose OK. If you go down to Fabric Selector, this is where you can select the type of fabric you're going to use. Now right now, we have selected knit fabric. You'll notice we have 5,592 stitches. Let's see what happens if we change it to default. And we'll go ahead and just choose automatically convert all sewing attributes for outline data and text in the current design page. We'll select that. And you notice the stitch count increase because the, the type of fabric was changed. Let's go back down and let's select that again. Let's deselect this and we'll go back to the knit fabric and choose OK. And it will, you'll notice that what happens when you select the knit fabric that it did not change the stitches. So let me go back and add the, the check mark and choose OK. Now you notice that the stitch count was reduced. We'll go in this time and we'll go to the fabric selector and let's choose sheer fabric. And by the way, if you notice as I'm going through this, it also tells you the type of fabric that is a sheer fabric what the recommended stabilizers are, but it doesn't tell you the needle size. That's something that you should look at your sewing machine reference manual to help guide you. We'll choose OK. Now we're back down to 6,368 stitches. So it is adjusting the stitches as I make those changes. The next option is to choose Select Color Palette. Now one of the things you can do is select the thread choice that you have. And for instance, I have mostly isocord threads, so that's why I have isocord thread palette. But I just bought some Hemingworth thread, so let me see if I see that. And I don't. But one of the things that you will find with Hemingworth thread is you can get use a conversion chart to the brother embroidery threads. So I'll choose brother embroidery. And now if I go over to the color tab for this particular design and let me select it because you'll notice the color tab is blanked out. You have to have something selected. You'll see that my thread colors down here are part of the threads that are in, within the brother embroidery chart. You'll also notice that the sewing attributes tab has some information here and we'll cover this more later. So this covers quite a bit for the basics.
but I do want to mention about exports. Export allows you to export a design into a different format. So let's go to export and let's say that I've created this design but I need to share it with somebody in a DST format. This is how I can do that. Thanks for your time today. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to help my channel grow and it can only grow with your help. And consider joining us in the Facebook group, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire, or join the PE Design 11 group. That group is moderated by someone else, but I'm very much an active member of that group. Thanks everyone and have a great day.